Hey guys, Jonathan here at Shadow Foam, and we're back in the workshop again this week, but we're looking at this big red Clark toolbox. So as you can see here, we've got a big stack of all the colours we do. We do seven colours, and as you can see from these drawers, we've already done blue. So we've got blue face up and blue face down here. This is how the foam is available. Seven colours, but with a black surface layer, and it is reversible, so you can have it black face up or the colour face up. And this illustrates it perfectly, because we've got black face up and blue face up here. So we're going to be doing this drawer now, which is electrical tools. Most of these are all insulated or they're electrical crimpers. And we're going to be doing that in a green insert again, but we will be doing it black face up and that way we'll just see the green underneath. But we're going to be doing all of the other colors, all the other drawer inserts on the channel in videos following this one. So you're not going to want to miss them. Make sure you subscribe, go down below this video, click the subscribe button, click the little bell icon. You won't miss any of our future videos and let's crack on. Right, so we've got the insert here, and we've got a mixture of tools, but we've got a, a quite a large selection of these CK crimping tools. These are for when you're doing electric cables and you want to make off the ends, whether you're using boot lace ferrules or normal crimps. You use these, these are for like big industrial cables. We've got an Ethernet crimper, so this is for when you're making out, like making, <laughs> making out, making out. We've got other crimpers, different styles and types, and then we've got an insulated hacksaw. Again, it's not strictly a cutting drawer, is it? You might want to put that in a cutting drawer, but for me, this was something that you'd use very, very seldom, but it's just handy to have it fill up the drawer. What we've got here is a gas soldering iron, and then a solder sucker, and then a soldering iron stand, which is really, really handy to have. I love a gas soldering iron. Just means you don't have to worry about finding a plug or anything. You can just solder wherever you need to without stressing. Underneath the soldering iron, we had the interchangeable tips and a little tube solder, and then the little spanner as well. That was all underneath. Then we won't move all of this stuff across because we'll probably start with these items and work our way across, but we've got a full set of Baco insulated spanners. So these are if you're working on live equipment if you're working on something that you can't isolate and power down, you'd use these, which to be fair, I've never used them. <laughs> if you can turn something off, you turn it off, don't you? You don't leave it on. So I've never had to use these in anger. And I think as far as I remember, I picked these up for about 45 quid off eBay and I just couldn't turn them down. There was a stage when I was working as an engineer in the factory that I was on eBay looking for most of my tools because that's where I got some really good deals. And it was stuff like this that I was watching thinking if I get it for cheap, I'll buy it. And then I did subsequently get it for cheap. So here we go. When it comes to the layouts, we've already done the layout here, but there are a few little hints and tips that make it a little bit simpler. You can have them top to tail. You can squeeze a few more in if you do it that way. If we put them end on like this or all the same way around, they do look good that way, but you end up taking up 20, 30% more space putting them top to tail like this, you do squeeze more in. And the same with these little spanners down here, we'll put those top to tail as well. And the same with the crimps, you can see they're top to tail. So we can fit a fair amount in this insert, but the one difference we'll be doing here is firstly we're having green underneath, which should give us a nice different look, but we're gonna be adding finger pulls to everything because this is a denser foam. This polyurethane foam, this original older grade is very soft. It's not nearly as drawable, and the coating does come off when it's used in anger. So, all that being said, all that's left to do is get my glove on. Do not cut shadow foam without a glove. I only usually wear one on the hand that I'm holding the tools with. That gives me a little bit more movement in my hand that I'm cutting with. You wanna get your scalpel and a scalpel blade ready to go. Now these come in our cutting kits. Cutting kits come with most orders on the website, or if you're only buying one or two bits of foam, you might wanna buy the cutting kits. They're not much money, and they have everything in them that you're gonna need. So they've got the scalpel, they've got the blades, they've got instructions, they've got anti-cut gloves. Shadow Foam branded ones, which are pretty new. So yeah, let's get started. So we're halfway through and I'll talk you through the technique now on how I'm doing it. If you've not seen this before, what are you playing at? Make sure you subscribe to the channel and go back and watch some of our other videos because we cut a lot of foam on this channel. That's an understatement. We've done that full row there. We will be adding a finger pull, but I'll cut this big item on here. This is like a bit more of a challenging one. So it's probably a good one to actually just show you quickly. Hmm, much quicker than usual. Right, so all we do to cut an item is we place it where we want it to go and then we use the scalpel like a pencil. We're just holding it tightly to the item, making sure it's square to the foam and we're just cutting lightly into the foam all the way around. At this point, we don't worry about how deep we're cutting down. We're just cutting nice and lightly to just give us an indication of where it went and the, the profile, the shape of it. So you want to cut all the way around the item 
until you've gone and met back up at the start. You want to make sure you've gone all the way around before you move it. Brilliant, so when you've gone all the way around the item and you know that you've gone all the way around, you've met back up at the start, you can then move the item. And realistically, you shouldn't be able to tell where you've cut. If you've cut correctly and you've cut nice and neatly, you can't even see the cut you've made. So in order to see the cut, you've got to push down on the foam. And you can see there, if you push, you can see the incision that we've made. And doing that, we can then go back with a scalpel and at this point, we can make the cut as deep as we need it to be. So we only really need to go down about 30 mil. This is a 50 mil piece of foam and we want to go down about 30 mil. So I'm using the side of the scalpel as a reference and I'm just making sure that I'm cutting down deep enough. And we're just following that cut all the way around, making sure we've cut all the way down around the whole of the outline of the shape. Once you've cut all the way around the item and you've cut down deep enough, all you have to do then is just push your finger down one side and you're just peeling the foam back towards you and you do want to follow the peel along. You don't want to be grabbing it at one end and pulling it back like a banana because it doesn't peel like that. We don't want it to peel too easily because the problem is then it will fall apart. We want it to uh, take a little bit of effort to force the layers apart and that way we know once you've done it, it's going to stay looking smart. And we'll go back at the end and we'll add finger pulls to it but for now that is done. So let's crack on, cut all the rest of the stuff in and then I'll show you how to do the finger pulls. So that's all of the tools cut into the liner and it's looking really good. And the only thing we've got to do now is add some finger pulls to make it easier to get some of these items in and out. So there's two major ways to cut finger pulls. One is with a straight edge, which is where we lay that on the foam and we cut a like a track that can give us little uh, finger pulls, a nice neat row. And we will be doing that for this front row of tools here. But the top, we'll be using one of our stencil sets. Now these are available on shadowfoam.com. They make it dead easy for cutting radiuses and circles. So we'll be taking one of these, we'll be taking a large circle stencil and then we'll be using that to cut finger pulls individually for some of these bigger items. So let's start with the, uh, the ruler and the straight track first. Right, so we've done all the finger pulls. Most of them were 50 mil, but we did a couple of smaller ones here. And I'm on the last one now. So what we do, we just place the stencil where we want to have a finger pull. And you're just basically putting them where they kind of naturally fill the space. So you can see we've put them in similar places, but we've tried to complement the layout with the finger pulls essentially. So we've done a nice straight track here for all of these tools. But then on the bigger tools, we've just put semicircles wherever they fit in. And the last one, we're just going to place the stencil there and then just cut another semicircle just on the handle of this hacksaw. We just follow the gauge around follow the stencil around, cut it to the same depth as where we peeled before and just peel it out, simple as that. And that is that liner absolutely done. So last thing for me to do is put this back in the roll cap. Right, so that's all finished and I love how that's turned out. I really like the uh, the contrast when you've got the black on the surface and you can see these little green accents. I know they say red and green should never be seen, but I like it. I think it looks good. Let us know in the comments what you think about this. Red and green, is it a horror? <laughs> What do you think about it? I love it personally, I really like it. And to be fair, we don't do a great deal of videos on roll cabs, which is really where it all started with the hand tools in that big red toolbox, which I love. And it does make a nice change getting back to that because we've done quite a few power tool builds like this one. We've recently completed the skill power tool wall and we do still have two blank panels to be fair, which I could add some hand tools to. We've obviously got a few along the top as well. But let us know in the comments what we could add to these two to try and finish off this wall. What tools would you add to these panels to get the most value out of them? We've got an orange drawer there, which is crying out for some new shadow foam. So let's get onto that one. Right, so this drawer has all of these Bondus T-handle Allen keys and also the Weir Allen key sets as well. So we've got here a full set of metric Bondus T-handles and then a set of AF or Imperial Bondus Allen keys. Then we've got a torque set and we've got a stubby torque set plus matching Imperial and metric Allen keys. So all we need to do is change it over to the new shadow foam grade which is much more durable it's a lot better and it's cut and peel and this time we'll be adding finger pulls to it so it should look really good let's get that out the drawer and let's get to it 
I'm actually really happy with this draw because there was a little bit of extra thought. Maybe from a first glance, it just looks like two sets of T handles. But in reality, it's two sets of T handles plus one extra T handle because these are Bondus Allen keys. These are long reach Bondus Allen keys and they're amazing. But the yellow standard AF Imperial ones, these ones, they come in a set of 10 and the metric ones, which are the red ones, come in a set of eight. So when I was doing the layout for this draw about seven or eight years ago, when I actually did this first, it didn't look very good because with the metric being like two down, I ended up with a weird gap. So I actually ended up buying an extra one. So we have two six mils in this draw to make sure that the layout looks as good as it possibly can. And then at this side of the drawer, we've got, these are made by Weir, and these are just standard sets of Allen keys. But the difference was, the reason why I chose Weir is because they use the same color referencing, they use the same color coding. So it's yellow for standard Imperial, and it's red for metric, and then it's green for the Torx. So it's all the Allen keys you'd ever need, pretty much, other than obviously Allen keys you have in a socket set, and they look really good in the liner. So let's get into cutting. Right, so we've cut all the T handles. Next thing to do, before we move on to the sets of Allen keys, we're gonna put in the finger pull run and I'll show you how to do that. So they're a bit tricky to get out without a finger pull. So it definitely needs a finger pull. And it also looks really good because it will give a little flash of orange through the layout, which definitely adds to it. We'll take all these out and then all we're gonna use is a long straight edge. And we're gonna be going from the center of this gap to the center of this gap and then we'll be putting this on an angle, so I will be measuring this. So from the top of this T to the bottom of this T is 16. We'll just use one of these T's to mark it. So we'll go, we're going from the center of there, the center of there, which is good. But now we want to do it a ruler's width. We're going to start over on one side and we're just going to cut across all of them in a straight line. And then we're going to put the ruler on top and that's how we're going to cut the top row, a ruler's width. Now the ruler's width is 25 mil, so we're also going to cut a half round, a semicircle, and we've got one of our stencils here, out of our stencil kit. We want to be cutting a half round on the end of here, and the same on the other side. And we're just lifting up the little pieces, and you can see they pull out quite easily. You just have to, some of these longer pieces, you just track along with your finger underneath. And once we've done that, that's all come out now, and I'm really happy with where we're up to so far. That is looking great. Time to put all of these Bondus Allen keys back in, if I can remember the order and then we can move on to the last few bits. Right then, so they're all in and that does look really good. I think it does, it certainly helps for the ease of use when you've got a finger pull, but it also looks really clean, I think, having that finger pull there. So that's done, happy with that. So next thing is we need to just cut in these last few Allen key sets. And then for these, we'll be doing finger pulls, but just a semicircle, and then we're all done. So yeah, let's get going. So that's the three sets of Allen keys cut in, and at this point, I'm just pausing a little second because I'd like to add a logo, a Shadow Foam Shield logo somewhere, because it's a really nice detail. If you, We've got a little bit of space left. Cutting logos into these foam inserts is a really nice way to add a bit of detail. It brings the color through. We're gonna be adding that logo about there, and that's dead simple to do. We'll show you how to do that, which means now I can figure out where this set of Allen keys is going, and also where our semicircles are going for our finger pulls. So we know we're gonna add a finger pull over here, so we'll do the ones that we know. So when it comes to finger pulls, it's dead, dead simple. We're just using our stencil template again. We're just using a semicircle. We're finding a nice convenient spot where it's gonna be easy to grab the tool. And then we're just using the circle, overlapping it, and then cutting a semicircle. And then you just use the same technique to peel it out. You can see here, there's a couple of ways to make it easier. You can use the scalpel on the side just to make sure it makes it easier peeling at the exact same depth. Or you can use one of the smoothing spinners just to help make sure that it tears on the exact same depth. 
Right, so everything's done. We're just onto the logo now and we've printed out a simplified template of our logo and we're just gonna use the same technique as cutting around items. This is actually a little bit easier because it's not a 3D shape, it's flat. But we'll just use a little bit of tape. Doesn't need much really, this is just to stop it moving. We're gonna start with the detail in the middle rather than the outside cut. So we're just gonna literally use the same scalpel and just cut lightly along the lines in as accurate as you can. The, the more accurate you are, the better the logo is gonna look. Right, we've cut all the way around the letters. Now what we're gonna do is cut around the outside of the shield. When you've done that, we can take all the paper away. We can peel all of that off. Now what we need to do is go back with our scalpel and make sure that we've cut down deep enough. We wanna make sure we're through that black layer all the way around and that we've met up on the corners. We don't wanna be tearing at the surface layer of the foam. So we just go all the way around, making sure we've gone all the way through the black layer. And the same with the letters. We wanna make sure we've gone through all, all the way through the black layer and on top of that, make sure that we've met up on the corners. Brilliant, so that's all done. And now we are gonna be peeling out the part of the logo that isn't the SF. And we're gonna be leaving the SF in place. So same technique as before, we're just pulling at the foam, following it along with our finger and peeling it back. And we're just taking away a nice shallow layer, just as black surface layer really, really all the way around. And that's it, simple as that. We've got a cool looking shadow foam shield in there. Right, so that's all the cutting finished. And I'm really happy with that. So I'll show it to the camera. We've got the SF detail now, which is a nice little up cheeky upgrade from how it was originally. We've got all the same Allen keys in there, but now we've got this finger pull. We've got finger pulls on all the Allen key sets and we've got a logo. So I'm really happy with that. Let's chuck it in the toolbox. Right, smashing, so that's another draw done. We've got a few draws left in this. Let us know what would you like to see in this roll cam. And yeah, I'm really happy with how that's turned out. The bottom of these tool inserts we've cut are really, really smooth. Uh, we used our smoothing spinners to get these so good. So if you don't know what they are, or you'd like to know more about how to get such a smooth finish, go and check this video out. This is a video we did recently showing you the three best ways to smooth out the bottom of your cuts. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos? That's Subscribe. It. Subscribe.